Second point here, if you have an outward shift, this is an increase in demand. Just like with PPCs, it was an increase in production. Oh, you could tell me that was crooked. Inward shift, anyone want to guess? Decrease in, in demand. Okay, so here's a sample demand curve. Did the curve shift inward or outward, and how do you know? Did it shift inward or outward, and how do you know? Victoria says outward, how do we know? Because they've marked them D1 and D2. So this would have been an example of an outward shift. Do you notice the price is identical? Okay, so this was not a shift in price because they're both P, whichever quantity you look at. This is some kind of other reason that it shifted. Well, what kind of other reason? Well, I'm glad you asked, children. There are six of them. Examples of non-price determinants of demand. So they are consumer income, consumer preference, Prices of complementary goods, prices of substitute goods, population demographic seasons, government policies and taxes. How can consumer income change the quantity demanded if the price doesn't change? So they get more money, they can buy more. Exactly. As you get more money, this is just like we talked about with our soda yesterday, you're going to buy more. That's exactly what this means. So as in income increases, and notice I'm using an arrow now because I don't like writing out the word increase. People will buy more at the same price. So the price doesn't change, it's just the fact that the people now are earning more money, they're willing to buy more. We're not going to write it, but what happens if the income decreases? What if one of the people loses their job and suddenly the household has half as much money? What's going to happen? They're not going to buy as much, right, because they don't have the money to do it. So the price of the good didn't change, it's the person's income that's changed. That's why that's called a non-price determinant. That's what shifts the curve either outward or inward. It's not a movement along the curve. Customer preference. Garrett, would you like to rename this? Uh, yeah. Yes. What would you like to rename it? Um, and what did we call it yesterday? Pizza pop. This is the pizza pop. What did we call pizza pop incident? Pizza pop effect. effect. The pizza pop effect. Exactly this. So Garrett's buying his pizza pops. Everything's good. The price doesn't change. But suddenly he's like, whoa, no thank you pizza pop. Why did he suddenly want less of them even though the price didn't change? What if they had like cut the price in half? What if they were like two cents? What if they were free? Right? Doesn't matter what the price is, he's not buying the pizza pop. And I think we've all had a food like that at some point that we've just gorged on and then, mm. Mine were, you know the Halloween candies Whoppers? The chocolate covered malt balls? Can't do that. Can't even, I can't even think about them. Like I'm getting nauseous. Can't do it. Nope, just the thought of it. I ate too many in one sitting and I was just like, Bleh. So this is affected by, obviously your personal taste, but it can be affected by advertising. You're sitting at home, you're watching TV, everything's good and suddenly you see a McDonald's commercial. Does it not make you crave McDonald's a little bit? Right? Or you see a pizza commercial, like, oh my god, I totally want to order pizza. Right? That's what advertising can do. It's going to increase the demand, even though the price didn't change. Fashion. The guys probably don't care, but there's this phenomenon in the States the day after the Academy Awards are aired. So what happens in the States the day after the Academy Awards have aired? 
the parties are done, people are already hung over, they're good, they're up the next day. What happens with the fashion industry? No, 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 you've got to think like a girl now, Connor. They don't. What did they watch the night before? Well, all the celebrities on the red carpet. And what are the women wearing? Gorgeous dresses and jewels and purses and new eyeshadows and everything. And what do we suddenly want the next day? Everything they have. So what happens is people will watch the Oscars. And if you're a fashion designer, you'll stay up that night and recreate the dress somebody was wearing and then sell it the next day as a knockoff because somebody wants the dress Angelina was wearing or the dress that somebody else was wearing. The price doesn't change, it's just because of fashion trends and advertising, suddenly we all want it. Women are nuts when it comes to fashion. Seriously, women, I don't know if you know this, boys, we will wear shoes that don't fit and that hurt because they're pretty. Would a boy ever do that? No, I don't know, it's a girl thing. We, like, they'll be a half size too small, but they're pretty and we'll wear them. They'll give us blisters, we'll still wear them. It's a girl thing. Fashion, environmental awareness. And I'm just going to put dot, 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 because there's tons of examples that fall under this. What does that mean, environmental awareness? So maybe producing it actually in the factory is causing more output in terms of emissions from the factory. But then you're like, oh, well, if I buy what's something that's like a pizza pop? Calzones. Calzones over there, they don't damage the environment as much. You might be tended to switch. Again, the price didn't change, but your preference has changed because of some other factor. Do you understand consumer preferences? It's not just what you like and what you don't like. It's more than that. Exactly, like the tainted milk story. <sighs> I've not had chocolate milk since I heard that. Were you, you were here that day when I told my friend who works for Farmer Lane what they do with chocolate milk. Yeah. Chocolate milk is, they use, what the milk they use to make chocolate milk is what they call tainted milk. So it's milk that has some blood in it or some other kind of fluid that they can't use in white milk. That's what they throw into the vat of chocolate milk. Well, well, we drink the cow's milk. Why is it suddenly gross that we would drink its blood? I don't know. Yeah, that's chocolate milk. Hmm. So we're going to look at complementary goods versus substitute goods. It is, and we eat it there, and we're okay with that. You never had a rare steak? And loved every second of it. What's a complimentary good? Well, what does the word complimentary mean in English? It, do, it can mean free, not the sense I was thinking, but you're right. What are two goods? What does it mean if we say they're complimentary? Without using the word compliment. <laughs> they go together. Right? So an example could be your washing machine and your dryer. We typically buy those in pairs. The washing machine and the laundry soap. Would we buy laundry soap if we didn't have a washer? Probably not. Those are called complementary goods. So although it's not the price of our good that's changing, the price of a complementary good might change. So if washers went on sale, you might also want to buy a dryer even if it's not on sale. Why? Because it's convenient, you want to keep them both the same timeline, you want to have new of each. So that's what we mean by complementary goods. So if the price of a complementary good increases, The demand for this good, if the price of a complementary good increases, the demand for this good also increases. So it's going to shift the curve outward even though the price of this good didn't change just because the price of something else changed. I'm just going to go to Garrett first. 
Okay. Xbox One came out. Yes. It was like $400. For yes. Me. I figure it's like a pretty dollar price for the video game system. Okay. But the games are like $70, so no one bought them. So why would you buy the system and not the games? Well, you don't buy the system at all because the games are $70. Why would you spend $70? Okay, so let's say the price of the, what was this? A, Xbox. He's very. I love how passionate you are about your examples. Yeah. Let's say the price of the Xbox went down to fifty dollars. Would you buy games? But are the games the same price? They're they still the same price, but the unit itself is down to fifty dollars. So the price of the complimentary good goes down. Would you probably be more apt to buy games then? I'd probably buy the Xbox and it's sell for scrap. <laughs> Right, in theory, you're probably going to pay less for the Xbox and buy some more games because you're not spending as much in total. That's what this is, price of complementary goods. So let's use that as our example. So the price of an Xbox, is there a particular number? Xbox 3000? Yeah, uh, Xbox? Xbox uh, 150 quid. Okay, Xbox, price goes down. Demand for the games. is going to go up. That doesn't mean that every single person is going to run out and buy more games. It means generally across society, if the price of the complementary good changes, something's going to happen with the demand for the other one. So you might not buy one, and maybe Derek won't buy one, and Talon won't buy one, but somewhere people are going to buy. And don't forget, we looked at yesterday individual demand versus demand schedules for everyone. What's a, oh, yeah, Ichi. Yes. Yes. So as the X, oh, oh, sorry. Oh, uh, as the price goes up, the demand goes down. Derek was right. Demand goes down. I realize now what you're trying to tell me. Yes, you're right. Yes, you're totally right. And our example is right down and up. So complementary goods are two goods that go together. What's a supplement or a substitute good? Yeah, you, can you can switch it out, right? So we talked yesterday, if Coke suddenly goes up, some people will still buy their Coke because they love Coke, but most people are going to do what? Okay. Buy Pepsi, buy brand name, buy whatever. Okay, so as the price of a replacement good increases... <laughs> as the price of a replacement good... Uh, increases. The demand for this good increases. This is what I was thinking earlier, increase, increase. So if you want Coke and Pepsi is double the price, you're probably going to buy more Coke. As you can't get Arizona? I don't even know what that is. It's just like iced tea. Is that the cans that are like teal and kind of pink and like they're tall? Yeah. Okay, okay, I know, yeah. They're tall. They're tall, yeah. They're tall, yeah. yeah. That's why I get them. Oh, so by price is your motivation. Interesting. Yeah, well, that's why I wouldn't get it if it was like $2. Example, if Pepsi price goes up, Demand for Coke goes up. So pipes of Pepsi goes up, demand for Coke goes up. Correct, because people don't want to pay as much for Pepsi. So the Coke uh, price um, But we're talking about non-price changes, so what can shift the curve outward? So assuming the price is consistent, what's going to happen? The whole curve's going to move. Five is kind of a category where we throw everything that doesn't have another category. So population, demographic, seasons. Let's talk about population. As more people move into an area, what's going to happen to the demand of products? It's going to increase, right? That makes sense. Price is going to stay the same, but more people are going to want. What do they mean by demographics? What's a demographic? Carrot. Uh, a certain group of people will like the same thing. Okay, can you give me an example of a demographic? Um, I don't know. I guess a lot of teenagers like, I don't know, like reality TV shows. 
okay? So teenagers is a demographic of our population. Seniors is a demographic of our population. Adults over 18, under 40 is a demographic of our population. So exactly what you said, certain groups will like certain things. Um, bingo in the afternoon. Who's probably there? Seniors. Probably seniors. Well, you're not there because you're in school. I'm not there because I'm working, right? That would be a senior demographic. So what is... Antiques Roadshow. Actually, I don't mind Antiques Roadshow from now and again. So certain products will sell better to certain age groups simply because that's the way life works. What does seasons mean? Snowblowers in winter, sunscreen in the summer, Slurpees? Every time all year round because we're Winnipeg. So just to give an example for each of those, as population increases, Demand increases. Price doesn't change. It's an outward shift of the curve. Demographic means certain age groups. Prefer certain goods. And that becomes important when a business is deciding where to open a new store, right? If you're in a neighborhood where it's new developments, it's a lot of families, young kids, they're probably not going to open a senior center there, okay? They're probably going to open McDonald's with a play place. Why? Right, for the kids to play in. So that's what we mean by demographics. Seasons, certain items, or I'll call them goods, certain goods, sell better in certain seasons. So the summer, for example, the demand of bathing suits is going to go up. Demand for snowsuits, probably down. In North America, what if we were in the southern hemisphere? Okay, well, it depends on the month of the year, but yes. Is, um, is Brazil the same seasons as us, or are you guys below the equator? Uh, You're opposite, aren't you? Both. You're both. Oh, where you are in the country. Um, so right now you are... So you're in spring? And we're in fall. That would seem weird to me for Christmas to be in the summer. That would seem so bizarre. I can't imagine like Christmas without snow. That's funny. I'm always in the winter. Because <laughs> you keep going back and forth. <laughs> Government's policies and taxes. This is actually related to the short little article I sent you on Edmodo that you're going to read tonight. And it's about how yesterday the government announced that they're going to do a program to help people buy winter tires. So they're going to allow you to take the price of your winter tires and spread it out over four years rather than paying the whole thing right now. Why might that increase the demand? Easier to pay, right? More available for families that maybe don't make a high enough income. That's a government policy or taxes. So high taxes demand is going to go down. What does the government love to tax? Three things. Uh, not so much actually. He heavy, heavy tax. Clothes is the same as regular tax. Nope. 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 They tax people, really? <laughs> Three things that you can buy that have the highest tax rates in Canada. Gas is one of them. Huge tax rates. When you go with your mom or dad and you fill your tank, about 60% of that money is going right to the government. It's not actually to pay for the gas in your tank. Cigarettes, huge taxes on cigarettes. And that's why people are always wanting to go to the border to buy them because they're cheaper in the States. And Connor got the third one, huge tax on alcohol. Why would they tax cigarettes and alcohol? Because they're addictive, right? So the more you're addicted to it, the more you need it, the more you're going to buy. So huge taxes, demand is typically going to go down. Um, an example for policies was when they instilled mandatory bike helmets. It's illegal not to, and I was going to ask you guys, is it 18 or is it 16? I think it's 18. No, I think, it's, I think it is 18 that's the limit. I don't have to wear a helmet if I don't want to. That would be stupid. It's my brain. I'm going to protect it. But it's actually illegal to not have a bike helmet. Well, what happened to the demand for bike helmets when they instituted that? 
went up, right? So they didn't change the price per se, but it's the government policy that changed the demand. My, okay, I don't know. My guess is they're probably going to give you a warning. Then they would give you a ticket. I've never heard of anyone being arrested over a bike helmet. <laughs> you know, really. That would probably make the news, some little kid crying and, you know, people being upset. I, yeah, they probably give you. Really, if you look at speeding versus bike helmet, the cops are going to concentrate on speeding because it's more money. Right? Really, it probably depends. Is the cop busy? And is it near month end and he needs a quota? Or is it by a donut store and he's eating donuts? You know, who knows? Who knows? OK, what you're going to do right now with a partner, and I'm going to pick your 7 o'clock partner is you're going to explain these same things but in terms of the car industry. And I'm going to do the first one with you. Who doesn't have a 7 o'clock partner or their 7 o'clock partner is not here? 